If you're coming by this, it might be for you. So stop scrolling and take a listen. I'm sure if you've grown up in church, you're familiar with the scripture that says, I should have looked it up before I got on here, but it's a scripture that says your gift will make room for you. Meaning that God has touched everybody with some sort of gift that he wants you to use to edify the body of Christ. He wants you to use to edify and encourage others. And that gift, when you walk in it, it will create opportunities for you. Hence the phrase, your gift will make room for you. But the question that I have for you today is, are you making room for your gift? What do I mean by that? Number one, if you don't know what your gift is, if you don't know what your values are, if you don't know the product, service, or problem, the problem you want to solve in the world, the product you want to provide to the world, the problem you want to solve in the world, you got to figure that out. But when you figured your values out, when you figured out what your the problem, product, or service you want to offer to the world, the next thing is, have you identified your gift? What is the thing that you do better than most with the least amount of effort? It's something that naturally God has just touched you to do. Like one of my cousins, God just touched him and said, you go, you know, those videos where it's like the person's pouring the water and it's like when God made you and depending on the attribute, it's a lot of water, a little. Well, I have a cousin that God touched him athletically. Like he just did a backflip in my backyard and he ain't even been working out. God just touched him. Whatever sport he plays, he's always been good at it. God just gave him that without training. Some people just like that. All right. Everybody is like that in some area. Everybody is him or her in some area. And it's your, in your job to figure that out. And then once you figure that out, you got to make room for your gift. It's just like anything else. If you're about to get new furniture, you got to get rid of the old furniture. If you're about to put a new car in the driveway, you got to move the old car out the driveway. You got to make room for your gift. Some of you, your mind is so full of doubt, it's no room for your gift. Some of you, you're taking jobs because you're not trusting God to be a provider. You're taking jobs you're not supposed to take, and they're taking your time away from you working on what God wants you to work on. Some of you are in relationships because you're afraid to be alone, and that relationship is taking the space that God has for your spouse or the space that God has for you to identify your gift, whatever. We're occupying our lives with distractions. And, you know, there's this term called a seat filler where when there are certain movies or premieres, if they don't have enough people coming, they pay people to just sit there. So when they're doing the shots and the camera angles, it doesn't look empty. They're just a seat filler. They're just occupying the seat. And if the person that's supposed to be there comes, they're supposed to move out of the way. Some of you have seat fillers in your life, seat filler relationships, seat filler jobs, seat filler activities, and they're distracting you from what you are supposed to be doing. And something I say all the time, and what I'm going to work on this year is coming on here and being more consistent about the same message. Because sometimes we got to hear stuff more than once. We don't want to build lives that we got to do a bunch of stuff, sin to distract ourselves from the pain, sin to distract ourselves from the disappointment that we're not living the life we know we should live. We have to build lives that we cannot wait to wake up and experience. Because if you are building a life that you can't wait to wake up and experience, you won't have time, nor will you have a desire to participate in things that are detrimental to you because you're trying to distract yourself. If you boil it down, most sin that we participate in is us trying to distract ourselves from some negative emotion. We don't want to be alone. So instead of learning how to be alone in a healthy way, we equate being alone to being lonely. So we will settle in a relationship of abuse and appreciate a young new in a relationship of getting cheated on, all kind of stuff settling because we just don't want to be alone. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to take a season and learn how to be alone and learn that being alone doesn't equate to loneliness because I once made a post in high school that says surrounded by people but feel alone. You can be surrounded, you can be at a party and be alone. Learn how to be by yourself and not feel lonely. And then you can be around anybody and be healthy. That's that's free game. But the point I'm making in this video is we are all here for a purpose. 
Go back to school, pay attention in science class, learn how hard it is for a child to make it all the way through nine months and get here. Do you think you really went through all that just to exist? No, you are here for a reason. And it's not just to pay bills and die, pay taxes and die, wake up and go to school and die one day. You are here to make a difference, but you got to get focused, get rid of the distractions, identify who you are so that you can make choices with alignment in who you are. And then not only will your gift make room for you, but you will begin making room for your gift and they will go hand in hand. The, one of the greatest things I learned from Atomic Habits is work hard at what comes easy. If you take that thing that God touched you, think about that little thing where they're pouring the water. It's some attribute you have where God poured the whole gallon on you. God poured a whole bucket of it on you. If you put hard work behind that thing, doors are going to open that no man can shut on your behalf. God bless y'all. Have a good one.